Hi everyone, with the stream, I want to answer the chicken or the egg question. You know, which comes first? Do I draw the grid first or the object first? So I want to show everybody what it's like to start with the object first. I think starting out perspective is the most difficult and that's what's holding lots of people back. I want the stream to show my process so that, you know, you'll see how much room you have to actually express yourself with perspective. To describe the vision I have in mind, We'll be drawing a miniature home, so I was imagining, you know, you'd have the bed, you'd have a desk down here, and then the kitchen would be right here. So that sort of thing, where everything is just in one room. And so to start off, I want to talk about the very basics. I know we have a bunch of videos, and you could watch those right after this stream. So first of all, the horizon line, or the eye line. So the eye line is where your eye is looking, or where the camera is. And so now, I'm going to talk about the vanishing point. The vanishing point, it's where all the things converge to. Got a line. So this is one point perspective. It converges on to one vanishing point. And then if it's two point perspective, then it converges on two. And last but not least, you got a three point perspective. So three point perspective, it's pretty much like two point perspective. But now there's a dot on the top. And so the way to tell if something is two point perspective or whatever perspective, is that in one point perspective, the horizon or the horizontal and the vertical lines, they are perfectly straight. They're not converging to anything. In two point perspective, you can see that both the diagonal lines are converging towards a place. And this time only the vertical line is perfectly straight because it's not converging towards anything. In three point perspective, all sides are converging towards something. Technically, everything is in three-point perspective. It's the most accurate. You can see here, right? It's distorting. But most of the time, the third point is just so far away that you can neglect it. So that's why it ends up looking straight. I'll tell you guys about this little box here. I like to start with a thumbnail. Thumbnails are always the easiest way to start off. Never you have no idea what you're going to draw. And what I really recommend when drawing a background is you draw the object you want to focus on first. So I want to start with the bed. I think one point is the closest, and the reason why I can say that is because in one point perspective, the face is like this, bloop, bloop, bloop. But then if it were two point perspective, it would be tilted towards a vanishing point. Look at that. What I was thinking, it'd be like a loft. So the bed would be up here, and then there's gonna be like a desk right here. And I think this bed is taking up a lot of space. So right now I'm just guesstimating, right? But the way I'm guesstimating, it's it's an educated guesstimate because you can see if I extend the lines right here, I could get to the vanishing point right there. And then the nice thing is if you have the vanishing point, bada bing bada boom, you got a horizon line. <laughs> I want to put the essentials first. I want to put the kitchen and the bed because those are the stuff that takes up a lot of space. Ooh, how do you know if the object fits the perspective? Very good question. So the reason why I started with the object first is because I'm doing it the opposite way. Because usually they draw the line first. They draw the horizon line, vanishing point, and then the object. But I find that sometimes this doesn't work for everybody because it's very constricting to work that way. So in this method, I drew the object first. So the way I figured out the perspective is I followed the diagonal lines to where they're converging to. So now I know that this is the vanishing point. And then, this line, it looks like it's parallel, so maybe this is one point perspective. Then now that I look at the horizontal lines, they're also pretty parallel, so this tells me that this is one point perspective. And if I want it to be two point perspective, I'll draw like a little implication of it tilting, just slightly. And eventually, these two lines will meet. Because on here, I've already figured out the first vanishing point. From that vanishing point, I've figured out the horizon line. And so if you're doing two point perspective looking for the second one, make sure that it's on the same horizon line because it's impossible to have two horizon lines. So right there, you can see that with this guesstimate, if I was doing it on two point, it'd be like this. But yeah, long story short, there is only one horizon line and you can find the horizon line by finding the vanishing point and making sure that every vanishing point is on there. Another thing I want to share is this is drawing from imagination. To me at least, a great way to practice is a healthy mix of both. Drawing from imagination and from reps. If you draw from reps, that gives you information that you wouldn't know. But then drawing from imagination, you're testing yourself on what you know. If you ever hit a hurdle and you're like, ah, I don't know how to draw this thing, then that just means it's a limitation of what you know. Now I'm going to draw the rest of the room from here. 
So the next most important thing about drawing from perspective is that everything is scaled to each other. So it's all about the relationships, the comparisons. So now, this bed, I don't know how big it is right now. I'm gonna put something else in the scene so that we could compare. And I'm gonna start off by drawing the room. So I imagine that this bed is tucked into the corner of the room. So I'm just gonna extend this line right here so that it's snug with the corner. And since this is one point perspective, I just draw a horizontal line, just like that. It's really starting to come together, and now I want to draw the kitchen. I was thinking of drawing a little furnace, kind of like in Hell's Moving Castle. So you know Calcifer, where, where he hangs out? That's what I imagine. Ooh, any tips for folks who struggle with scale? So I'm gonna draw a kitchen drawer, and a way you could do that. Maybe I'll draw a person, and I'd say that maybe the drawers are half the scale. So I'm using the height of the bed to estimate the height of the kitchen drawer. So if these lines share the same line, if I extend it, that means that they're on the same level. So that's how I use scale. That's why I say that having a different object will help give scale. I'm planning off by starting with the floor, because the floor is the most important space. Because the floor is a finite space. I'm gonna draw the thing that I was thinking of. Uh, what's it called? Is it called the furnace? So this is where you cook. Somebody mentioned they wanted a crystal, so I will put a crystal on the desk. Yeah, I'm gonna make a perspective ruler. Yeah, because this ruler, I know for sure is accurate. I am just making sure that the construction lines are accurate. But I know not every software has this, so all you could do now, you know, extend the line the classic way. So now, we're done our thumbnail. I can make it fit the thingy. From here on out, I'll be showing the coloring process. I'll be sharing questions that I really like from the stream. But before that, I hope this video taught you that drawing backgrounds can be simple and really fun. I drew this over a span of two hours, so I can only imagine what you all could come up with given time and passion. Just remember that all you really need to do is to wrap your head around the basics of perspective. So try this method out for yourself. And now, let's start the Q&A. Ooh, what is your tips on not getting mad at your drawing and giving up, <laughs> if any? Hmm... I think the technique is you just have to acknowledge that not every drawing is going to be perfect. That's the best way to put it, because a lot of that frustration comes from you wanting it to be a certain way, and then it's not turning out the way you wanted it to. But yeah, long story short, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about your drawing not being perfect. Ooh, Kit Kat or Snickers? As much as I like Snickers, I think I like Kit Kat better. Yeah, have a break, have a Kit Kat, and all that. Yes. Oh, thank you, Killer Cam. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, Kit Kat, I made the right decision. <laughs> Thanks so much for supporting the channel. But this stream is really all about winging it. Winging it with educated guesses. I really hope that this inspired you guys to try backgrounds up for yourself. Because, yeah, they are daunting, but you will get through it. Because really, you're capable of lots of things. Then you know. So here's like a full view of the drawing. If you want to ask me or other wonderful artists here at Wing Canvas, join our streams. Come say hi and we'd love to have you. And until then, thanks for joining me. Join a virtual art class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learned something new, please like and share this video with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you could check out next.